All right, we need to be going over the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, and why I believe you are bullish right now going into Friday. If you were here yesterday, I've been telling you all week here on the channel, Monday through Wednesday, downside. Thursday through Friday, upside. So I recommend you like and subscribe because every single day I'm giving you the content you need so you are prepared to make money in this market, but you need to be doing your own DD because this is not financial advice. Now, as we jump in here, I'm going to talk about exactly where we were. As we zoom in here, we're on the daily chart. You can see this was your key support range. We can come all the way back. We can see back here. These were your lows back in March. You come back once again. This was your bottom before you absolutely plummeted back in April. Then once again, you retest this zone back in May. And then once again, when you tried to break above it, you had a little bit of consolidation right here as well. So it is no surprise when you come back into this key range that you do not plummet right through it. It also lines up with everything we looked at going into GDP. That's why I told you yesterday, GDP is bullish. Again, we go back to that. What did it say? Bye, bye, bye. GDP is going to do this. GDP, it did exactly what we expected. You came out flat to neutral, but it was good. It came out from, from an expected negative 0.8 to a negative 0.6, which was growth. That's what we wanted to see. And it lined up with oil and our thoughts on energy. So as we come in here to about the 15 minute chart, we can see we popped out of this area and we're looking good. This is what we wanted to see. You're pushing up to that next level. If you come back, this is ultimately where we had to assume resistance would start to kick back in around 13 to roughly. But again, I think you have more room. If anything, 1328 and then up to the range of locally almost 1335 to 134. But I believe you have room here and you're looking better and better as time goes on. But tomorrow we are going to be left with answers, which is something we definitely, definitely need to see here. Now, as you're kicking in here, I want to go over some of the trades I took on today just to be transparent with everyone here. Now, you all know I had some energy positions, and I want to be very clear about those. I did post my loss that I had on INDO. I didn't post it in Discord because I didn't actually buy that stock on Discord. I actually posted it into the day. And only people in voice saw that. But that was a minuscule loss because it was a stock play, not options. Besides that, what were we looking at? We have some AMD. Those are sitting flat right now at break even. They're pushing up at the end of the day, so that's pretty good. UNG looking incredible. We have that chart. We're going to go over energy here in a second. Flat as well. And then the big winner on the day, 3M. The contracts were at 64 cents. In a matter of 30 to 40 minutes, they went from 64 cents all the way up to $1. Massive win on the day. Congratulations, Discord. That's it for right now. Now, I'm holding some positions into tomorrow, very clear, because I see upside. Now, when we go into this, I want to be very clear about what we're looking for tomorrow. Extremely, extremely clear. You have a few things happening tomorrow. You have your PCE data, which Powell claims to be your most important data. This is from him at the last Fed meeting. He said PCE is the best source of seeing what's really happening with inflation. Again, Powell's words, not mine. So this will come out tomorrow, your PC information. And I have to anticipate going into GDP with CPI, those things coming down and they're doing better, that we have to anticipate PC will most likely do the same. And why? Because energy is overall reducing the cost of things across the board. As far as people are trying to say energy is not affected into PC and some of these other factors. I'm sorry, but energy affects everything because if energy costs go down, then your supply chain costs go down, then your delivery costs go down, et cetera, et cetera. These are things you have to be looking at. So when we look at PC, I have to anticipate it will come out decent, most likely better than last overall month. So that's what I'm looking at there. And then of course, after that, you have your Jackson Hole meeting with Powell speaking at 10 a.m. Eastern, so 9 a.m. Central for me, 30 minutes into market open. Very important. Now, what are we looking at? We want to see if we can get above 13.2 here on NASDAQ. I'm going to give you my ranges of what I'm looking at. Again, I'm going to be very clear. I'm not looking at downside right now. I told everyone Monday through Wednesday, that was your opportunity for downside. Thursday through Friday, those are your upside days. And Wednesday was your buying opportunity. Honestly, today was a buying opportunity as well, just because you kind of trended out of this area. So going into tomorrow, what am I looking at? I want to see if we're going to break above 13.2, hopefully get some sort of retest and start to push up most likely you're going to push in the pre-market. That's how I see us moving because as of right now, when we go to book map and looking at cheddar flow, in my opinion, hedge funds are looking at the market for upside right now. 
I also want to address that Bullard, if you don't know, was going on an absolute tear today. I mean, he was one of the biggest bears kind of in the market. So if we really come back and look, and so if you're in Discord as well, we have a news bot that covers the most important overall tweets that we like from the Bloomberg terminal. Um, and Bullard was basically going on a rampage. I like front loading, saying he wants to raise rates higher. But the big thing to know here is he was saying 3.75 to 4% is where his rate target is for the end of the year. If we come back to this, Again, this is just where rates are right now. They're at 2.5%. That equals a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 hike going into the end of the year. And I would have to say that is a conservative take, a not aggressive take on the market. And that would be bullish for equities, in my opinion, going into the end of the year. Again, you know my viewpoint long term. I do see downside coming. However, what they're pushing out right now is bullish narratives. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. So when we go back to Discord, he was saying a lot of things, in my opinion, that were, you know, hawkish. He was saying the bad things that kind of needed to be said. However, it seems like Bullard's going on a temper tantrum because nobody else is really handling the market like it most likely should be handled, which we've talked about quite a bit here. He's really going in on it. Again, I've covered a lot of this in Discord today, so I don't want to spend too much on that. If you want to see it, go to Breaking Market News on Twitter. They have this all on there, so you can go see it from the Bloomberg Terminal. So going into this, what am I looking for? Very clearly, going into the market, I'm looking for a push above 13.2, hopefully a retest, and then trading it up from there to 13.4, possibly 13.5. Going over the S&P 500 with a SPY, I want to talk about this. I mentioned this yesterday. Your key level to get above was 14.75. If you did not watch the video yesterday, then you heard me talk about that on SPY. What happened today? You basically open up on the market. You're pushing straight up, boom, boom, boom. And then you get rejected immediately at 14.75 or 4.75. Push down and you climb back up. You bust through it into the day. Bullish, bullish, bullish. You love to see it. I believe there's upside from here around to 4.20.2, give or take. From there, I'm looking for around 4.21.3. After that, you're back in that bullish territory and that narrative, and you're looking for 424. So I want to point out a few targets here. 421, boom, 421.3 roughly, and then right here around 424.5. That's where I'd be looking, target one, two, and three. Those are your key areas on SPY if we come out at a bullish sense, which again, I have to believe that you look strong going into tomorrow, even though right now the after hours are down a little bit. Again, I don't care too much about the after hours. I'm curious on what's happening right now and how the market moved and what hedge funds were doing. Now, I want to show you book map and I want to show you cheddar flow and going over my opinion there. As we look here, again, you're, I'm just showing you what the market's showing us. All day long, we weren't seeing too many overall uh the, on the hidden order book coming in here, which is dark pool, anything that's not going to show up on your level two data, this is what the blue line represents. So as we get in here, this blue line right here, as it's down, that represents sell orders. As it's to the upside, it represents buy orders. The bigger the overall iceberg, the more contracts being bought on ES futures, which represents the S&P 500. So you can see very calm all day. However, what I want to show you is this green line, your CVD. It represents buying volume on the market, buyers versus sellers. Now, if CVD, the green line, is going up while the market is going down, that is bearish technically. However, you saw a lot of stagnation, but you were making higher lows all day long. So if we go back to ES, I want to highlight this really quick so it's a little bit easier to see. You can see all day long, you are making higher lows. Okay, You can see the trend that you're making. You're consistently making upside movement all day long, right? So when we come back here, you can still see buying volume was still going up all day long. You had a little bit of dip in the morning, but it was just going up all day long, which told me that we were still bullish, which told me that I should be looking to be buying calls going into tomorrow still. I'm just get doing what the market shows me is, is happening right now, right? So in Discord, I'm telling everyone, that's what I'm doing. I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying, even on Twitter. Again, if you don't follow me on Twitter, I recommend following me on Twitter so you can get those updates. I'm posting and telling everyone what I'm looking at. I started showing everyone. Ulta, that's a joke, but I want to show overall what's happening here as well. If you go down to AMD, clear, descending wedge. We love this opportunity. That's why I was buying it. Free play for everyone, posting it so everyone can see. So as we look back here, and then you get to the end of the day, what happens? That hidden order book, that level two, the dark pool. What's happening here? Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Major orders coming in. Buyers across the board. 
This is what we wanted to see. CVD maximizing here. Exactly what we wanted to see. Now, CVD will dip on the after hours just because the volume greatly decreases as you go into after hours. It's something you have to know. Uh, however, you can still see the large orders coming in here. So although there's not tons of buyers, the buyers that are stepping in here in the after hours are doing very big orders, okay? So you can have fewer buyers. So think maybe there's there's usually 100 buyers during market hours, but in the after hours, there's 10 buyers, let's say. This is just hypothetical. However, these 10 buyers or these smaller amount of buyers coming in the after hours are buying a lot more quantity. Now, I want to go over to Cheddar Flow, show you what's happening here. Again, it's more and more interesting as we get in here. We showed you yesterday the spy we we looked at the order flow yesterday go watch the video the spy is still bullish in my opinion if we come here to premiums yes you have some big sweeps coming in i assume these are hedges my personal opinion because we saw the major orders coming in yesterday but if you still look at the put to call ratio you're still in a bullish sense personally again my opinion but if you combine these with yesterday which i encourage you to go look back at yesterday's video in the flow i even have it bookmarked i believe very interesting to see here. QQQ. Again, yes, the biggest orders were, and the top two were blocks, which are very conservative plays, arguable, almost definitely hedges. You're looking here, you're still getting a lot to the upside as well. And then I want to show you something that caught my attention and really flipped the script to saying the fundamentals here are pointing for more upside. One, VIX. As we look at VIX, I want to show you the four hour chart here. Okay, so here's your four hour chart. You had your downtrend yesterday, the day before, like actually maybe Monday. I don't know what day. I can show you what day it is in a second. You gapped up, boom, you're out of this trend. That was when we were saying downside was possible. Now, is it a coincidence that when we saw downside, that VIX also popped up? I'm just saying it's probably not a coincidence. Now, big picture, people are still, I know people are going to be commenting down low. Look at VIX, you're still higher, you're still higher, you're out of the range, yada, yada, yada. We're going to go to the weekly chart here for a second. Look at the weekly chart for VIX here. Sometimes you need to take a step back and just zoom out. And when you look here, you're sitting at nine weeklies to the red side, and then you're looking like you're going to get an inverted hammer here on VIX, which is a terrible candle. And I don't recommend looking at VIX from a technical standpoint so much as your favorite stock and equities. However, when we look at this, you have to acknowledge that it's looking like another bear trap going into the beginning of this week. Which again, if you go back to the YouTube channel, what was I saying? Going into incoming trap. This was Sunday night, I believe, or maybe Monday. I don't know which day this was. I was letting everyone know and people were getting mad at me saying I was lying, this and that, this and that. However, it's playing out to the T. I'm not here to tell you I told you so. I'm here to tell you to open up your bias on the market. Stop looking at the market from a bias standpoint and saying it only has to go up. It has to go down because X, Y, and Z. Stop. That's what's causing you most likely to lose in this market. You need to come to this market with a transparent viewpoint. Number one. Now, JNK, junk bonds, been one of the best indicators overall what's happening on the market. I'm going to go to the 15 minutes so you can see a little bit clearly here. So we can look at the past few days. I'm going to turn on open so you can see each day. So looking here, this is the start of your week, but we can also look. Each purple line represents the start of a new trading day. So basically, since we looked and called the top at locally 13.7 on NASDAQ, every day you've been opening for downside, downside, closed up here, downside, next day, downside, every day, down, down, down. And then what happened yesterday? Again, go watch the video. When I talked about junk bonds, I said, it's looking like junk bonds are starting to form a bottom right here. And why? Because you actually got an upside move going into yesterday. You didn't get the upside you wanted yesterday, but it was the start of making that bottom, which also, if you remember, we were talking about it because you were making the bottom here on NASDAQ. You had a little bit of upside, but a lot of stagnation going into the end of the day yesterday right here. That's was your entry opportunity, which is what I was trying to tell everyone. Again, this could all be thrown out the window if Jackson Hole goes terrible, but again, I'm still looking at Jackson Hole from a bullish standpoint. Also, looking at J&K, what happened today? Again, you're moving towards the upside. You're regaining traction. 95.6, a pretty decent level, but again, I want to see that 96.8 level retested again up here. So these are the levels and things I'm more trying to watch. DXY, also mentioned this yesterday. You're finally getting a little bit of downside on the dollar. I want to mention, I don't believe you're going to get tremendous or crazy downside. I'm looking at more of a bull flag here. 
when we go to something like the four hour. That's what I want to be watching. I want to see this progress over the next few days towards the downside and set up for another push up because you did have a double top here on the dollar index, which when the dollar index goes up, what happens typically? The stock market starts to drop. What do you know when you found the bottom here on DXY? Stock market started to drop right at our key levels, people. So everything we're looking at, we have been prepared for. We were ready for all this to start playing out. Another thing I want to mention, again, 10-year yields. I mentioned that I still like yields. I think yields are going to continue going up. However, yields today, you saw some resistance. We're at, at our key level. Once again, 3.12 all the way up to 3.25 is a pretty big level here. And again, you started to see some downside here. Now it's important to know you are clearly, clearly, clearly in a channel here. I want to make that extremely, extremely clear. So you're still in this channel, obviously down here. It's a little bit clunky, but you're still sitting in this channel. But I want to mention everything right now is playing out for the upside on the market. So I like what we're seeing. I like where we're at. I'm not surprised by anything. I'm ready going into tomorrow. But what do you need to be looking out for tomorrow? One, PCE data. We got to watch that. It's going to be right at market open. And then you have Jackson Hole coming out at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central for me, 30 minutes into market open. I will try to keep everyone updated on Twitter if you follow me here. So I recommend following me if you will. Don't do it. I don't really care. Discord, you'll see me in there as well talking about it live. I'm going to go into some stocks that I'm liking and stocks that I'm looking at right now. Now, first up, I'm going to talk about 3M. 3M is probably one of the most interesting plays right now. And I don't want to get anyone trapped in this, so do your own DD, yada, yada, yada. So right now, they're facing a bankruptcy ruling that may sink a litigation stock. So essentially, they have these earplugs that they're saying their defense... They're being accused of these earplugs causing the death of soldiers. 3M is arguing, no, it's not their fault, yada, yada, going back and forth. That's the big thing going on here. It's on the fence of 3M winning this. And look, as you're breaking up, you were already getting a monster move from these bottoms, extremely undervalued right now. The key retest of this range back at 140. I'm looking here. I sold half my position because we we're up like over 50%. So I had to, but I'm still holding the other half. I have September, I believe 16th, uh, 150 calls. They were 64 cents when I bought. I believe they closed at like 85 cents, but they got all the way up to a dollar. Congratulations. Anyways, but I see this thing going crazy. Also important to know that there was over 300,000 options bought on 3M for the $200 strikes for September 16th over the past few days and weeks. Important to know, extremely, extremely volatile. Someone knows something going on here. This is more of a risky play, but just know I like it a lot. Next up, AMD, one of my favorite plays here. First of all, I wanna show you on the weekly. I encourage everyone here, if you're looking at charts, zoom out, people. We need to start zooming out. AMD, what's happening here? In my opinion, you're gonna, you're gonna see it here. I mean, it's a, it's a clear bull flag, people. It really is. Clear as day bull flag. You are ready for more upside. And for anyone wondering why AMD and NVIDIA are going up, it's because Biden signed uh, the new semiconductor chip bill. And it's not coincidental that he signed it the day, the day after, yeah, NVIDIA earnings. So when NVIDIA was looking for downside and Biden signs the deal, it props it back up. Boom, boom. You're looking good. So we're looking for more upside. Target here, if we have a good overall Jackson Hole meeting and PCE data, I am targeting locally 109 to one. 07. I'd be looking for this range up here. I think you could easily start pushing back up through this range. My personal opinion. If you're looking here for stops, I am personally waiting to see if we're going to push back below our monthly. That's where I started getting into my positions was around this level here. The monthly is a major level going all the way back through earnings. I'm going to get rid of this right here. You can see we had earnings back here and you continuously held this range. That's what you want to see hold, and you're looking good right now I'm breaking out of that wedge. Next up is going to be Apple going into tomorrow, more of a day trade. I'm looking for this thing to start filling that gap up to 171.3. You can also see a lot of these other plays in here. Amazon also trying to fill that gap. I believe we talked a little bit about them yesterday, maybe the day before. I'm not really sure what day we talked about them. Microsoft also working its way back up. Microsoft has tons of room. I'm targeting 282. Then after that, we're targeting obviously 285.5. You like this range, the volume's kicking in down here. You came right down to demand and boom, nothing but fireworks at the end of the day. You love to see it. Fang stocks are where it's at right now. That's where you want to trade when you start catching a reverse on the market. So when you start seeing SPY, 
cues start to reverse back to the upside, your first target should be FANG stocks every single time. Last but not least, it's gonna be Tesla. You had your split. Really interesting stuff here. Clear line of support at your weekly. It's clear as day. That is your demand level. That is where buyers are stepping in. You love to see it. If you come down to this range, it has to be a buying opportunity, but I don't think you're gonna get that test right now. Where I'm targeting some resistance, I'm personally targeting the 299 to 300 range up here. That's where I'd be day trading it, trying to aim and hit this target locally up here. If you get some love out of SPY and NQ to start your day tomorrow, that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you got something out of this. If you have questions, comment down below. I'll try to answer every single question on the video today. Have a good one.